today, we delve into one of the most debated topics in history, the moon landing. Uh, Martin, we, we have to go to you first of all. Why do you think it didn't happen? Have you really thought about what it would take to fake a moon landing? So we saw the moon landing, well you saw the moon landing, and uh, you believed it. Because the rocket did launch. We all saw the rocket launch. For me personally, I just think far too many people would have had to, to cover, it up. cover up for far too many years. Well, how many people? To never have slipped up. You're watching Inquiry X. Neil Armstrong was an American astronaut and aeronautical engineer who made history as the first person to set foot on the moon. He was born on August 5th, 1930 in Ohio, United States. Armstrong developed an early interest in flight and aviation, which later led him to pursue a career in aeronautical engineering. After completing his education, Armstrong joined the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, which later became the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or probably how you and I know it as, NASA. He served as a test pilot for NASA, flying a variety of experimental aircrafts and became known for his exceptional flying skills and cool demeanor under pressure. In 1962, Armstrong became part of NASA's second group of astronauts, known as the New Nine. He served as the command pilot for the Gemini 8 mission in 1966, where he performed his first successful docking of two vehicles in space. This mission demonstrated crucial techniques and paved the way for future lunar missions. So, before we dive into the debate, let's set the stage. On July 20th, 1969, NASA's Apollo 11 mission successfully landed the first humans on the moon. That day, an estimated 530 million people watched astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin complete this monumental achievement, which marked a giant leap for humanity. Getting back up to that first step. Uh, it's, uh, that is not collapsed too far, but uh, it's adequate to get back up. Roger, we copy. It's a pretty good little jump. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. However, from the very beginning, skeptics emerged, challenging the authenticity of this historic feat. So, let's now examine some of the evidence supporting the moon landing. Well, first and foremost, the lunar surface samples brought back by the Apollo mission provide undeniable proof of our presence on the moon. These samples have been extensively studied and verified by scientists worldwide. Expert Dr. Lisa Collins, a lunar geologist, said that the moon rocks obtained by the Apollo mission have distinct characteristics not found on Earth. Their chemical composition and age are consistent with the lunar origin. These findings strongly support the authenticity of the moon landing. In addition to the lunar samples, there's an abundance of photographic and video evidence documenting the mission. The iconic images of the astronauts on the moon's surface, the American flag planted, and the Earthrise photo have become timeless symbols of human achievement. Dr. Michael Stevens, an astrophysicist said the images captured during the Apollo mission showed the astronauts' movements, dust clouds and the unique lighting conditions only found on lunar surface. They provide visual confirmation of the moon landing's reality. Well, if you're anything like me, you're probably thinking, well, we have photo evidence, video and even physical evidence brought back from the moon and examined by various scientists worldwide then why do we have all this scepticism and disbelief in the mission in the first place? Well, let's look into it. The moon landing conspiracy theories have captivated the minds of many. One theory even suggests that the entire moon landing was a complete hoax and that it was staged by the US government. There are various claims challenging the moon landing, such as the alleged inconsistencies in the shadows, the wave and flag, and even the absence of stars in the photographs. These anomalies, according to skeptics, point towards a staged event. And while these theories have gained traction, many experts have debunked them using scientific reasoning and evidence. Dr. Sarah Thompson, 
a space historian, said that the alleged anomalies can be explained through scientific principles and the unique conditions of the lunar environment. The absence of the stars, for example, is due to the camera setting necessary to capture the astronauts and the moon's surface accurately. While doing my research for this video, I came across a very interesting interview by a conspiracy theorist named Bart Sibrel. Take a look at this. I mean, here's the simplest proof. It's simply logical. What they're claiming is that they went a thousand times farther than they can send astronauts today, 50 years ago, on the first attempt with one millionth the computing power of a cell phone. I mean, when they flew across the Atlantic for the first time, a few years later, hundreds of aircraft and thousands of aircraft were flying across the Atlantic. When they went to the North Pole and South Pole here on Earth, they never made it the first attempt. It took multiple times. And there's never been a technological achievement that no one could repeat 50 years later. It's like me telling you 50 years ago, Toyota made a car that could go 50,000 miles on a gallon of gasoline. And yet today, five decades later, their best car can only go 50 miles per gallon or one thousandth the distance. You would laugh and say the original claim is preposterous. And so here we are 50 years later, and now the farthest they can send an astronaut to the moon is one thousandth the distance that they claim to have done on the first attempt 50 years ago with less computing power than a cell phone, one millionth of the computing power. It just doesn't add up. It's the only technological achievement that could not be repeated 50 years later. Now, as far as I'm aware, I have never seen technology regress. If you think about your mobile phone, we started off with 3G, then 4G, then 5G. I remember as a kid, I used to have dial-up internet, and now we have fiber optics. So this interview from Bart was very interesting to me. I'm really curious to see what you think. So leave a comment letting me know what you think about the interview and also the moon landing in general. Do you think it happened? One thing that I will say is that it's important to remember that extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. And while scepticism is healthy and encourages critical thinking, the overwhelming scientific consensus supports the reality of the moon landing. The moon landing not only inspired generations, but also paved the way for incredible scientific advancements and space exploration, notably with one man at the head. So whether or not you believe in the moon landing, I think it's fair to say that we'll never get to the bottom of this, probably for as long as humans exist. The moon landing was in 1969, and today, in 2023, the topic is still quite relevant. If you've gained any value from this video, please be sure to like and consider subscribing as it helps the channel grow and reach a wider audience. Thanks for watching and see you next time on Inquiry X.